Hi everyone. So in this video, in this part two, we'll be going over how you can um, use the code in Python to actually get rid of these duplicated images. And I'm um, talking um, in terms of um, AI camp. So I'll be using AI camp's interface, but you can definitely run whatever I'm doing in um, Python using Jupyter Notebooks as well. So please stick with me and ask me any questions if you have any at all about how you actually run this Python code. Um, I also have an additional troubleshooting section using try um, and accept clauses in case you run into any difficulties when running this code, um, which I found on GitHub for removing duplicate images um, in a file path folder using Python. So again, please reach out if you have any questions. And I am Sonia Kole, and I'm really happy to help. So in the other video, I had talked about some of the theory behind removing duplicate images in Python. And in this video, what I want to do is I want to talk to you about how you would actually run this um, in um, a coding center or in Py or a Python environment, how you would actually go about removing duplicate images or images that are very, very similar to each other. And why is this important? Because if you download images for different sources um, to build machine learning models, um, you might run into a case of having duplicate um, data and duplicate images from different sources. So, for instance, um, what you may find is that um, like if I'm downloading images of Happy Baby um, from the web, and I have another video on that as well, I may have a situation like let's say that this is an image and I've downloaded it. Another one could exist, for instance, where maybe this image is just called um, one. And uh, in my folder, um, here the two are back to back, so that's great. But what if they're not back to back? Um, you know, you can see this image is called one, and this image is called one dash uh, cute happy baby laughing on white um, Michael Badnarik or so. Or, or um, and this is two. So, so you could have two images that are exactly the same uh, but have different file names. So if you're scanning through hundreds, so here there are about 786 items. So how would you know if you've seen an image before? It could be like deja vu, right? So I talked a little bit about the theory behind, um, and there's this code here um, that was provided on the site that was published um, by um, Elise Landman on June 4th. And um, I was talking about how do you detect, um, you know, the similarity across thousands of images and how you translate an image. We, we talked about uh, in the previous video, how you can take an image, for instance, you have an image of, this is my little uh, favorite little logo, there's a star. And we can talk about how you can translate this image, oh, eeks. And let's say that in this image, we have a star and a star and a bunch of other little stars. And we could have even this background being pink. So how would you take an image? I guess this is an image here. You know, this is our image. Our image looks something like this. So let's say I have an image of a star. Now I can scan along this and I can look for the exact color. Okay, this is 255, 255, 255 here. That's what that's white. And I can scan along with this little um, uh, color dropper, color picker at any different color in this image. And it's going to tell me, um, oh, sorry. So this is going to tell me that this color yellow is 255 red, green 242, blue is zero. Then I could probably uh, scan along and see what is this color? 
this red value, this green value, this blue value, they all seem to change. So it's in reality, what we're trying to do is we're, um, we're trying to divide it. You can see how many pixels, 575 by 372 pixels. And then I could say this is a JPEG or something. We're just really dividing this up into one by one pixel. So this is not drawn to scale, but it's, all, it's like we're, we're dividing it up and we're converting this into some sort of numerical values. You know, what is this box? Then we're going across the next pixel. So this is not drawn to scale, but the, the idea is the same. Like, what is that pixel? What is that pixel? What is that pixel? You're going across and you're putting them into a set of values. So now I want to show you the application in terms of the code in Python. How do you detect that these two are similar, for instance? Like how? I mean, they, um, you know, how would you detect that? D duplicate images in this. If maybe, you know, we could have some duplicate images and we just don't know about it yet. So in this code here, what I mentioned is that, um, and this is on the twitdatascience.com. So you can always scroll down here. And people usually put their open source code on GitHub. So this is available in a GitHub um, repository. So we can click this over here. And they have an example output, a PNG. So what this duplicate image finder DIF is going to do, and they have a readme here. So it says tired of going through all images in a folder and comparing them manually to check if they're duplicates. This script automates this task for you. So it's going to go through whatever images you have and it's going to find, uh, like for instance, in 119 total images, like these two are duplicates. So this one is called music speakers are JPEG. And then this one is called speakers.jpg. So those are the file names. And it found that these were duplicates. So you can use um, per default um, DIF outputs um, a sample of the um, duplicate or similar images it found. So that, that default is true for show images. It's a Boolean. So it has a true and false value. A similarity. The structure um, is high, is searching for duplicate images. So if you want to find duplicate images, exactly the same, it'll find it. Um, low means that it could search for um, you know, similar images. So they could be slightly similar, maybe just slightly off. So that's a judgment call. So if you want to do this, you would have to adjust this parameter for similarity equals high. You'd have to change it. So high means it's searching for exact duplicates. And low means that it's searching for images that are quite similar to each other. And um, they've kept the compression at 50. Um, there's a difference between that. Um, it, like, you know, when they're detecting between two images, they're compressing it to a certain width and height because some of these images could be like one image can be way bigger than another image. So you want to shrink them to a common scale and then determine if they're the same. So it just does some resizing there of these images so that the matrix, the rows and columns of that will be of the similar dimensions, um, the same dimensions to be compared. And they don't recommend that you change it. So what you do here is you'll go through here and you're going to see that this is the, this code that was um, needed. So you're going to work with this code here. Now, um, this video is for um, an AI camp where we use it in the coding center, which is an, um, a user interface for working with Python. But if you're working in um, Python in general, you can use um, Jupyter Notebooks. Um, you can directly put the code there and then work with that code in that folder. Um, so you can just copy and paste this to any Jupyter Notebook. But here I'm going to show how do we do that um, using the coding center. So the first things first is I'm going to um, create. Okay, so. So we're going to split the cell here and we're just going to paste that code. Now, for instance, if I wanted to, this is the AI camp interface. 
if I wanted to have this in um, a Jupyter notebook, what I would do is I'd open up my command prompt here. So I would type in terminal, have my um, command prompt, and then I would write IPython notebook. And this will open up a Jupyter notebook here. I set up Jupyter notebooks. And I would just do new Python 3. And I would just um, command V paste this code. So we're moving duplicate images Python. So I could also paste it here as well and do the same thing like split cells, you know, um, if I need to split things and organize them like a notebook. So this is a Jupyter notebook. But since this is for a AI camp um, over here, I'm just going to show you in our AI camp interface. So you can um, import these images here. And if you have any difficulty in um, installing them, for instance, if you're if you get something that gives you an error, what you can do is you can call something that's called pip install. So you can move this above pip install scikit image. Um, you can call um, pip install OpenCV Python. So you'd have to see how do you install each of these. So what this will be is this is going to be, this pip install scikit image is for um, being able to import this library of SK image measure. This OpenCV Python is for um, the CV2. So this pip install is like loading it in your computer. So you'll have those images there in that format. Then what you'll do is you're just going to run this over here. Okay. Now the other thing that we need and the code will tell us um, is you need a directory basically. You need where is this? So where is the path to your folder? What is a directory? Folder path must be specified as a Python string. So if it's on my computer, um, I'll have to look, where is the file path for this? What is the path that I need to use for this code? So in that case, I would just have it, um, I would look at this file path and I would have some code that says that the path to use is this, for instance. And um, sometimes you have to be very careful about the dashes on Windows or, or Mac computers, for instance, depending on the operating system. Um, but the coding center helps us kind of rise above those. Um, so this is the path to use if it's on your computer. But what I would want you guys to do is to um, instead have a project image. So in the final project, you're going to notice there's a group terminal. This is your command line. Um, it's Linux. It's similar to like Ubuntu. Um, it's very powerful command line. Um, so you could use a group terminal here, but you'll see we're moving duplicate images to IPY and we, this is an IPython notebook that we just created. And then there's a project images folder, which right now will be empty. So I'm showing you that inside this, you're going to have folders based on what task you are interested in doing. So for instance, I am interested in um, baby emotions, for instance, crying, a happy baby, for instance. So I'm going to want to upload um, I'm going to create different folders. So I want to have a folder for a happy baby. Create a folder. I'm also going to want a, a folder on crying baby. So I'm going to just like, create a folder here and, and so on. So you can see that there are already these two folders. They're empty. So for the happy baby, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come here. And I'm going to upload these files here. So all these here, I'm going to just do command. I'm just going to take them and I'm going to drop them in here. So they're going to be uploading in this folder here. You can see um, all these cute little babies, all their images will be getting uploaded.
So if you've done it right, what you're going to see is under happy baby, you go to your project images, you're going to have 786 images. And folks, that's sort of like how many um, of these images that we have in this happy baby folder, 786 items that we have here. So they're going to be uploaded. And if you want to just verify it, for instance, if you scroll down, you're going to have all these images of happy, happy, happy babies. Um, that, that are uploaded in, inside there. When the project image is happy baby, we can click it and see that this is a cute little baby that shows up as well. So these are all the images of happy baby. So what we need is we want to find, so these are the 786 items again, guys, 786 items, which is the same as this number of items here, 786 items. So now um, you can go back and do the data cleaning afterwards. But we just want to find, like, you know, you would want to, if you're looking at Happy Baby, you'd want to remove this image. You'd want to remove um, this image. These are not babies. Um, remove cartoons, um, unless you're doing a cartoon detection project. You'd want to delete them. But, um, but for now, we're just going to show how do you detect these um, similar ones. So we need that path to our folder, but how do we find where this is stored? I want to go into happy babies, remove the duplicates in that folder, then go into like the crying, like upload the crying baby, upload the sleepy, the tired baby, upload all of those different ones and then remove the duplicates from there. But how would I do that? So how would I find where this is located? So in your final project folder, or depending um, if you're working on your own computer, this could differ. Um, you just want to find out where is your directory? What is your working directory? Where is the path that you want to use? So in, in this final, so what happens is in this folder, final project, we have a group terminal. So where this is located it is it's located within this final project folder. This group terminal is located there. So under projects, we have this project, this is the code for um, the AI camp project here. And then we have our final project right here. So then what we do next is we are going to just navigate within that project. So we're going to print working directory and we have this final project. And then I'm going to do LS. LS will help me list everything that's in um, the, that folder. So whenever it's light bluish, that means that it's a folder. So it's almost like how you can see what's inside your folder. So this is project images. Then we see a terminal. Then we see removing duplicate images at IPYNB. So this is basically listing out everything. It's blue because it's like a little folder. It's like it, it has something inside it. So you can keep navigating inside it, the project images. We see removing um, duplicate images at IPYNB. And we see a group terminal here. So then I'm going to do is I'm going to do CD project, project images. And then I'm going to do LS. So this is changing the directory, going into that baby subdirectory. So you can see from final project folder, um, I'm now into final project, project images. I have um, changed my directory to enter there. And now I'm listing everything inside this folder. And the squiggle is basically everything that comes before. So I have a crying baby and I have a happy baby here. So the, yeah, those are the two folders that we have. If I add another folder, for instance, I could even make directory. If I wanted to, I could do MK, BIR, tired baby inside here. And then I could do LS and I'm going to see that I have a tired baby also created now. So from crying and happy baby, I have crying baby, uh, a happy baby, and tired baby. So that's making a new directory. So you can see right now that that's another way we can create a new folder, a new um, directory within. So then what we're going to do is I'm going to figure out what if I'm going to navigate into CD happy baby, because I want to work right now to detect duplicates in my happy baby folder. And I'm going to change directory. I'm going to, I'm going to oh, sorry, do list. I'm going to see that there are tons and tons of images here, right? So this one cute happy baby laughing on white Michael uh, Bednarek is, has been called um, this image here. Has been called this as well. You know, you're going to see that this is what these images are known as. 
Okay, um, they just got renamed in the coding center. And we said, this is the path of all these images. You know, like if you look at image 679, for instance, we'll see this little ah, baby out there. So that's what you'll see. And now we can just do PW to print the working directory. So this is the path that I'm going to use in my folder for um, on the AI camp um, directory for accessing the images of happy baby. So I'm going to call it path to use equals this. So I'm going to add a slash at the end here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this function that was written and really nicely provided on GitHub. Info on duplicate. So I'm going to run this. So unless I run it, this is going to be blank. So enter, I need to just click the run button here and then run this code here. So this code, as, as we properly found, right? It, it already told us that this one.jpg and this um, um, cute laughing baby on white Mikkel Bednarek, this one, they said that they were the same. So the mean squared error, the difference between those two images. So the smaller the difference, the more similar that they are with each other. They're exactly the same, so it's zero. So what this is essentially, it did, they did detect right off the bat, like as we wanted them, that these two are exactly the same, which they are. I just had copied and pasted this as a duplicate. It's also detecting that uh, image 17.jpg and this image are the same or very similar. This is the difference between them. And it's probably going to kick out the low resolution ones and that these two are the same. This is the, on top of each one, it's just the difference between the two images. That's the key difference between them. So you're gonna see that this is the mean squared error. These are the images that are detected as being exactly the same with each other. So it's going through and it's seeing this images, uh, 120, for instance. Images 120 is what this one is, this, this little kid here. This image, which is what is shown here, is the same as Shutterstock. We something the same image it basically detected you know images 120 and the shutter stock are you know pretty much the same uh maybe just some small mean squared error some small difference maybe on some compression or something behind the scenes but it helped us determine that these are the same so what you're going to do then is you can go through and just delete one of those images you see like how it detected in this again, like another one we can see our organic to baby formula. We could detect, um, we can look in and detect this image here. And then do image 15 and also see that they're the same. And it's going to, it found out of these 778 total images, it detected um, 51 duplicate images here. So what you could do is you can just go through and delete these ones that have lower resolution. So you can go in to the coding center or you can go into the folder that you use to upload it and you can just, um, you can copy this to a notepad and you can just delete those duplicate images that they've found. So um, you can go back here to files, project images, happy baby, and then you can um, you can search for those images and then just manually delete them as well. Or we can write code to do that too. So we can go search for images um, over here and um, we can even just go in and search for it and delete those images. Or what we could also do is we could also just do our um, You could just do remove. And then if you list everything, you shouldn't find images one anymore. You see, instead now, if we list everything, it doesn't have this at the top. 
whereas before it had one.jpg here, it no longer has it. One.jpg is gone. So you can just, you know, you can go through and you can remove. The next one to remove would be like image 15. Now JPEG, so you could also remove this here. You can keep on going through and then removing those. And then soon what you'll do is you go through all of those and you delete them, you'll figure out that you'd have removed the duplicates, which will be really great. So this is just a very quick way to detect duplicate images in your Python folder and to remove those images. So please let me know if you have any questions. And the point is to be able to have a folder of images that um, with, with very similar or exact images that are removed because it can identical images can have this um, different file names uh, depending on how you download them if you download them from different uh, sources or just the way things are or different websites or google images the same image may be reused in different applications so this will help you detect um, the images to remove and those that with lower resolution so you're usually keeping the duplicate that is the better one um, if at all, if it's better, if it's exactly the same, it'll just tell you which ones to delete and you can go through and remove them. And it is also possible to write programming code to go through that list to delete them. And I can um, create another video to, that shows you how to do that. But that's the manual way is using the terminal or just going and looking in and just deleting those files manually. Um, and this ensures that you have a very unique set of images as much as possible. Um, and it deduplicates, it uh, gets rid of the duplicate images that there are out there. So thank you guys. And please let me know if you have any questions at all.